Whenever a city tries to fix a roadway with numerous traffic and congestion issues, it follows a certain cycle. The city identifies a bottleneck, billions of dollars are spent in an attempt to revise the freeway, congestion appears to have improved shortly after the project has completed, and then new drivers travel along the freeway and traffic and congestion issues become worse than when the initial project began. This is the problem with the car-centric approach to urban planning. There is no magic number of lanes and interchanges that will solve traffic and congestion issues because the fundamental issue is the number of cars traveling along the bottleneck. It would be cheaper and more efficient for cities to better fund public transit instead of roadway expansions because it could solve the same problems more effectively. For a specific example, let's take a look at Reno's Spaghetti Bowl, an interchange between the I-80 and I-580 freeways that is infamous for being the deadly a stretch of road in the region. According to the Nevada Department of Transportation, crash rates along the Spaghetti Bowl are 150% more than the statewide average. From 2011 to 2015, there were 4,208 crashes reported within the 12 miles of freeway around the Spaghetti Bowl. This area includes the section of the I-580 from Meadowood Mall to Clear Acre Lane, and the section of the I-80 from Keystone to South McCarran Boulevard. Out of these crashes, 1,324 resulted in either injury or death. Inside of the actual interchange itself, there were 669 accidents from 2011 to 2015. Nearly 16% of these crashes occurred when transitioning between the I-580 and the I-80, it is estimated that roughly 50% of all accidents along the Spaghetti Bowl are from rear-end collisions, and another 20% are a single car crash without colliding into another vehicle. Due to the frequency of collisions, everyone who traverses along this interchange is at a higher risk of an accident than anywhere else. Oh, near misses. That's, pretty, That's how bad it is. Uh, so I, I really stay away from the spaghetti bowl as much as possible. For thousands of drivers, avoiding the bowl is not an option. This interchange at times can be a true test of nerves. I feel like I really have to be on my toes going through there. Because it could use some improvement. It's definitely dangerous and crazy. There's always accidents there. The main issue is the high volume of vehicles leading to a lot of congestion. When this interchange was constructed between 1969 and 1971, Washoe County had a population of approximately 130,000 people, and it was only designed to accommodate 90,000 vehicles per day. Since then, the combined population of Reno and Sparks has grown to 327,000 people, and Washoe County has a total population of 435,000 people. Roughly 260,000 vehicles use the Spaghetti Bowl every single day, and these conditions make the Spaghetti Bowl the busiest interchange in northern Nevada, with congestion during peak hours and frequent accidents. The Reno Spaghetti Bowl and its surrounding freeways has always been an ongoing construction project for the state of Nevada, due to its safety and traffic concerns. Between 1979 and 1999, there were repairs and safety improvements along the interchange. In 2001, there was a major revision to add new ramp lanes. In 2002, there was a project to revise the Spaghetti Bowl over the course of four years. In 2010, there was a year-long widening project of the US-395 from Moana to the Spaghetti Bowl. In 2011, the state of Nevada was awarded $72 million for a project designed to widen lanes and shoulders, improve ramps, increase capacity, and increase safety. Despite the decades-long effort to improve freeway operations along the interchange, the traffic and congestion issues surrounding the Spaghetti Bowl have never truly been solved. In fact, they are expected to worsen as Washoe County's population increases. Reno is anticipating an influx of 147,000 new residents by 2040 adding more traffic to the already congested bottleneck. In yet another attempt to alleviate these issues, the state of Nevada is spending $2 billion over the course of the next 20 years on a five-phase project to revise the Spaghetti Bowl. Phase 1 will add an expressway to reduce accidents to the most dangerous portion of the interchange. Phases 2 through 5 will revise the areas surrounding the Spaghetti Bowl. Overall, this two-decade endeavor is intended to reduce congestion, reduce weaving, improve air quality, improve safety, improve freeway operations, and add new surface street connections. Thus solving the problem once and for all. But once and for all!
Oh. In actuality, this revision will fail to provide any substantial improvements to the freeway operations. Historically, expanding a freeway only induces demand for more people to drive along the bottleneck. The Katy Freeway is the largest freeway in the United States, and it is an infamous example of induced demand in action. In 2004, the American Highway Users Alliance called one of its interchanges the second worst bottleneck in the nation, wasting 25 million hours a year of commuter time. The solution was to spend $2.8 billion increasing its capacity to 23 lanes. Between 2011 and 2014, the commute times increased from 47 minutes to 61 minutes in the morning and from 41 minutes to 64 minutes in the afternoon. The expansion to the Reno Spaghetti Bowl will be a repeat of the same story. Cars are simply the least efficient method for travel, and the more cars along a bottleneck, the more congestion you will have. The only effective solution to reducing congestion, improving air quality, improving safety, improving freeway operations, and making the city more interconnected is building a robust public transit system that allows more people to rely on efficient modes of transit instead of their own private cars. The National Association of City Transportation Officials has a helpful design guide demonstrating the throughput of a 10-foot lane at peak conditions with normal operation. When everyone drives their own vehicles, only 600 to 1,600 people can move through the bottleneck every hour. When frequent buses are added to the lane, this amount increases between 1,000 and 2,800 people each hour. If there is a dedicated transit line, over 4,000 to 8,000 people can be moved through the bottleneck every single hour, drastically reducing congestion compared to a system where everyone drives. Transitioning people into more spatially efficient means of travel can be done if a city prioritizes developing infrastructure that makes people feel more comfortable taking those alternatives. This premise is further demonstrated in the Downs-Thompson paradox, which states the equilibrium speed of car traffic on a road network is determined by the average door-to-door -door speed of equivalent journeys taken by public transit. In layman's terms, this means that if your city buses are stuck in traffic, so is everyone else, and it is counterproductive to increase roadway capacity instead of public transit capacity. When a freeway expansion is complete, three different types of convergences occur. Spatial convergence, where drivers who previously used alternative routes take notes of the improved travel times and begin driving along the freeway. Temporal convergence, where people who traveled before or after peak hours begin driving along the same hours. And modal convergence, where people who previously used public transit begin driving because the new route appears faster. Additional cars on the freeway also exasperates traffic pollution and safety issues. More cars emit more exhaust and microparticles that harm our respiratory systems. The increased number of vehicles adds to the congestion. And as the number of drivers increase, so does the number of them who may be inexperienced or reckless or having a difficult time handling the inclement conditions along the road. It is a paradox, but when everyone selfishly chooses what appears to be the fastest route for the individual, then the consequences of that decision outweighs any of its benefits. However, induced demand isn't inherently bad. The problem lies in the types of demand that is being induced. Since public transit is a more efficient method for transportation, the city should invest more in its public transit network. When billions of dollars are being invested in roadway projects, while there is a disturbing lack of sidewalks, the only bike path is on busy roads surrounded by cars, and the public transit service is unreliable, then people will choose driving because it is the only mode of transportation that the city supports to be viable. Essentially, the reason a lot of people in Reno drive is a direct result of the city's urban planning priorities. According to the United States Census Bureau, it is estimated that out of 137,626 people surveyed, 99,711 people in Reno commute to work alone in their cars. 19,315 people carpool. A measly 3,758 use public transportation. And 5,331 people walk to work.
In the Sparks side of town, out of 49,239 people surveyed, 39,598 people commute by car, 5,778 people carpool, only 886 people use public transit, and only 765 people commute by walking. Urban planners target roadway projects because a lot of people drive. However, the principle of induced demand implies that the reason a lot of people drive is because the city invests a lot in roadway projects while neglecting public transit. A lack of public transit ridership does not necessarily imply that people don't want to take the bus, whereas the current system is not useful enough for more people to take advantage of it. The current Spaghetti Bowl expansion is going to cost the state $2 billion over the course of the next 20 years. If that funding were to instead be used to bolster the public transit service, then the Regional Transportation Commission would be able to reform their transit network, adding new connections and strengthening existing routes. The Regional Transportation Plan for 2040 outlines the following reforms to public transit. Street car transit to connect the Reno Tahoe International Airport to Virginia Street. Street car service on Virginia Street from the Reno Tahoe Convention Center to the University of Nevada, Reno. Expanded downtown circulator bus service. Express bus service on South Virginia to serve the Summit and UNR TMCC Redfield campus. Express bus service on US 395 to serve the North Valleys. Service between Reno and Lake Tahoe and Truckee, California, connecting the RTC ride and TART systems. Service between Reno and Lake Tahoe, including Incline Village and the South Shore Transit. Express bus on Pyramid Highway to serve North Sparks and Spanish Springs. Express bus service from Reno and Sparks to the Tahoe-Reno Industrial Center. Commuter rail service from Reno and Sparks to the Tahoe-Reno Industrial Center. And a Lincoln Line Rapid Transit extension on West West 4th Street to Keystone Avenue. Unfortunately, these are all within the unfunded vision for transit. RTC estimates that the total unfunded costs to add these service improvements is $312.7 million initially and $7.1 million per year. The unfunded costs with commuter rail is an initial investment of $2.6 billion and annual costs of $14.3 million. This creates a frustrating catch-22. RTC is funded based on existing ridership so they cannot acquire the funds to make the kinds of investments investments that would expand service, and people who would take the bus continue to be neglected by an unreliable public transit service, this influences more people to drive, so the city continues to exclusively invest heavily in roadway expansions and freeway revisions, which end up being a counterintuitive solution because of how spatially inefficient private cars actually are. Improving public transit service is far more beneficial for a city than freeway expansions. It reduces the cost of living because more people would no longer be burdened by the expenses for gas, insurance, maintenance, and the vehicle itself. Fewer vehicles on the road reduces emissions and congestion, thus improving the air quality and freeway operations. Fewer people driving would improve safety because inexperienced or reckless drivers would not be putting themselves or others at risk of an accident. It would have the added benefit of making the city more accessible for people who cannot or do not drive for whatever reason they may have. Meanwhile, freeway expansions are counterintuitive and they will only exasperate the existing problems that they attempt to solve. More spatially inefficient vehicles increases the amount of congestion along a bottleneck, cars are constantly producing emissions and releasing particulate matter that worsens the air quality, and the added congestion makes the freeways more dangerous. This is why funding public transit is important, and it is imperative for Reno, among other cities who are planning freeway expansions, to learn this lesson. Otherwise, the traffic and safety issues can never truly be resolved, and they will be stuck in a downward spiral of freeway expansions, induced demand, and more freeway expansions. Why couldn't they have done it right the first time, or the second time, or the third time, it's been constructed on since I've been here.